Tanvir Gill. Tanvir Gill has been a business anchor for the last seven years. She's a very familiar face across Indian business channels. Tanvir has extensive experience in the financial markets. Tanvir started out by working for CNBC Television 18. She worked there for three years. Now Tanvir works for ET Now, which is the business channel of the Economic Times. She anchors primetime market shows on the channel. Tanvir will now today take us through life under the arc lights. What are the challenges in her glamorous and dynamic job? How tough is it being a business anchor and how fulfilling is the experience at the end of the day? Thank you Tanvir for being with us today here. Tanvir, how did you choose to be an anchor? How did the process actually begin? Well, it happened quite accidentally. You know, I was just given an opportunity where I got to uh, audition for being a business anchor. And one thing led to the other. So it was, you know, pretty much destiny having its part to play because of which I had landed the job. And then it was just, you know, learning on the job and honing my skills of being an anchor, thrown in situations that, you know, made me mature and learn the ropes of really uh, being a business anchor. So it was, it was not something that was planned, but something that happened accidentally and something that, uh, you know, just pretty much changed my life from there. Was it tough being an anchor and getting your first break? No, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, tough uh, getting my first break. Like I said, you know, it was a bit accidental. Uh, Destiny had a role to play. Uh, but what, once I got the job, I realized it was, it was not uh, an easy task, as no job is. Uh, and uh, it really took a lot of hard work, a lot of focus, a lot of concentration. And um, also, uh, you know, honing my skills came, was something that came over time. It was not something that I you know, just walked into uh, one day and I was like, hey, I'm the best at this job uh, in, in the industry. So it took a long time uh, before I could be very, very comfortable in the job. But yeah, a lot of hard work. I mean, the, the starting was easy, but the journey, of course, has had its ups and downs. What are the key challenges that this particularly dynamic job presents? I think the first and foremost key challenge that comes to my mind is that it's a high pressure job. It may not appear as one, uh, you know, if obviously you're a viewer and you're just watching uh, this Anchor Present News. Uh, so I think the challenge lies in making it seem effortless for the viewer, whereas it actually isn't. Uh, and that essentially means that, you know, you need to be so comfortable in front of the camera, no matter what's going on in your head, that uh, you're able to translate the news piece that's coming in or, uh, you know, in cases when it's breaking news uh, uh, in a way that the viewer can understand and benefit from that news piece. Uh, and for that to happen, you need to have a lot of presence of mind, which, um, you know, every day out of the 365 days in a year is not possible. But, you know, the endeavor is to kind of keep it leveled, uh, keep yourself, keep, keep your presence of mind all the time despite the pressures that are around you. I mean, as an anchor, uh, you're not just reacting to the news piece, but you're also reacting to commands given by the director in your earpiece. Uh, you're also kind of, you know, dishing out news items or doing your research on the internet, uh, you know, as the news is coming out to kind of make sense of the whole puzzle uh, and make sense uh, of the news piece for the viewer. So there's just so much happening which you don't realize uh, because you're so engrossed at that time in delivering uh, or doing a good job uh, of being in that chair. Uh, but there is tremendous amount of pressure in multitasking, if, if you know, that uh, defines it better, uh, and ensuring that the viewer gets uh, the best inference or the best understanding of a particular news item, best perspective essentially, uh, and reaction to a news item from you. Uh, while you're juggling all these uh, subparts to the job while anchoring. So I think uh, managing pressure is a, a very, very important challenge. Uh, also, uh, you know, you may not be in the right mood every day, but you need to project that things are okay on camera. Uh, so, you know, it's not one of, if you have, if you've had a bad hair day or if you've just woken up uh, with a bad mood, it can't translate on air. Um, one trivial challenge is also wearing makeup, especially for girls, because it's, 
you know you might have days where you're like I just don't even want to wear a spot of makeup on me but you have to because that's the nature of the job uh, and you need to look pleasant and you need to look presentable because again you know it's something that comes with the job you can't negotiate on it so I think these are the you know a few challenges but the one that's key is really managing the pressure on air which can in um, uh, some breaking news situations get really tough but it's also exciting uh, you know that's the other side it's it's not just the pressure but it's also the responsibility that you have of sitting in that chair uh, and being the the first voice or the first person that's actually giving out the news to a million people out there so you know it's it's also exciting but there is pressure to manage that as well. Uh, does this job provide flexibility to women or do women anchors as time goes on drop out? I think uh, it depends. I think my experience in business news television has been that you get a fair amount of work-life balance because you know at the end of the day especially if you're covering markets which I do uh, you know you're anchoring during market hours uh, so your coverage time is that much uh, your work time is that much. Of course, there's a lot more time that you put in in terms of preparing the shows and planning the shows, but that's aside. Uh, you do tend to get your weekends off, so there is a certain amount of work-life balance which I think you can maintain as a business news anchor. Uh, do women drop out of the profession? I don't think so, but yes, uh, I think the, there is no stated shelf life to the profession per se. Uh, I think the pattern these days is, of course, younger, fresher faces, you know, are perhaps more seen on television uh, than senior faces. I think their roles have changed and matured in a different way. Uh, but I think even if you were to take a break from anchoring, try something else and then get back to anchoring, uh, I wouldn't see that as a problem, you know. That, that's an advantage. That there's no time gap really in this profession. It's not like if you gone off for a couple of years, uh, you can't come back. I think you can come back because uh, the nature of the job is such that your experience still holds ground. And like I said, you know, if you're presentable, you have the right knowledge, you have the communication skills, um, the ability to connect with people, that doesn't go away, you know, if you've taken a break. Unlike other jobs where I think the experience, the nature of experience is very different. So from that perspective, I don't think uh, people, uh, you know, the time gap really matters or taking a break and then coming back uh, is a problem. Anchoring provides a lot of opportunities. Could you discuss a little bit more in detail what you think these opportunities are? Well, uh, you know, I constantly keep emphasizing on the fact that being an anchor, you are the face of the channel. And if you're a face of the channel, then you, you know, you're very accessible to a lot of established uh, influential people. So you get to meet a lot of interesting people uh, and that's one of the advantages of this job. Uh, you know, it's exciting, every day is a new day, every day is a different day, you meet new people, uh, you meet important influential people and that's, uh, that's a big driver for you uh, professionally. So given the contacts that you build, I think if you were to ever step out of this job, then you can uh, have a chance, I would believe, at corporate communications in any big corporate house you can have a chance at strategic management as well, uh, roles that require strategy and development yeah, because if as an anchor you've been covering a particular sector and as a research person you've been co covering a particular sector for a very long time, given your contacts and given your exposure, uh, accessibility, you know, you bring that much more to the table. So strategy and development, some roles uh, to that nature are also open to you. Marketing management, I think, that's another aspect. So roles uh, that have to do with marketing uh, are also something that uh, people from, uh, you know, having experience uh, in, uh, of being an anchor can perhaps explore. Tanvir, who is the business anchor you look up to? Well, I, my all-time favorite is Larry King. Uh, and like I said, there's nobody who connects people with people actually better than him. I mean, he, he has this aplomb, the style which is just so effortless, which is great. Uh, so he's one. Uh, then there's Maria Bartiromo, there's Erin Burnett. These are some of the leading anchors in international business channels. And they're, again, it's, they're, they're smart, they're sharp, they're to the point. 
uh, and eloquent, which is again a great thing. And uh, they're very basic in their language. So th the, the idea is not to look smart on, you know, you, you can be smart in, in your thinking process, but the idea is to really translate that smartness into um, a communication style which reaches out to an average audience member or an average viewer. And that I think they do really well. They are able to break down their questions, their, um, their interviews uh, for the average viewer to understand, which is very important, especially for uh, business anchoring because, you know, there's just so many jargons out there, so many complex words and terms. So to break it down to, for an average viewer and make it viewer friendly, an interview or your anchoring or the news bit that you're assessing or analyzing is, I think, uh, a matter of uh, talent, is, is something that's uh, reflective of your talent, and I think these people do it really well. Any funny on-camera, off-camera instances you'd like to share with us? To Any goof-ups? On-camera as well. I think uh, goof-ups are a part of life. I have had many goof-ups, and uh, many, many goof-ups, actually. Um, and uh, I think it's just part of the whole learning process. Off-camera, of course, uh, it's, again, it's, the banter is always on, so everybody's pulling everybody's leg. Um, and, you know, a show is not just the anchors, but the director and the producer as well. And the research that's supporting um, the show in planning and production. So it's just like a whole lot of people working together. And, you know, there are a lot of funny moments. It's, uh, it's fun. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of planning, uh, but it's, I think, at the end of the day, worth it. Tanvi, you've completed your MBA. Do you think a financial qualification is extremely imperative for someone who wants to become a business journalist? I don't think so. I don't think an MBA is essential to do anything in life, honestly. Uh, you know, we know a lot of MBAs who are, uh, well, doing jobs uh, that, you know, they could have done even if they didn't have the degree. So that's my view. I mean, I could be wrong there. People may have uh, uh, separate views on that. But uh, I just think you need to be a hard worker and somebody who's focused and somebody who has good communication skills and a sense of how to connect with people. And the rest, of course, you learn on the job, just like any other job. So I don't think having a degree, uh, especially a degree like, a, I mean, of course, you need to have the minimum qualification. You need to be a graduate. But I would really... Uh, I mean, if you want to do a master, you should do it for yourself and for what you want to build your career in. But for anchoring per se, I don't think an MBA is important. Tanvi, you're an inspiration to a lot of people. Who's your inspiration? Aap kisse prerit hain? Well, my mom, definitely, without a doubt, because uh, she's been uh, the biggest driving force in my life. Uh, she has motivated me to do better at my job. Uh, without her, I don't think I could have been here. And, you know, just the fact that uh, she helps me out with understanding situations that sometimes I can't understand very clearly. Uh, and to know that she's there to support me through the ups and downs is, um, is very reassuring. And it's also, uh, she's a big source of strength. So I, I think whatever I am today is because of her. Thank you so much for being with us. With us today, it's been an extremely pleasurable meeting. Thank you.